Hello everyone, I want to go ahead and share a handful of tips to how I approach modeling and assembling this modular building. If you don't know what modular modeling is, it's the approach to creating individual components that can be combined and arranged in different ways to create larger and more complex structures. Within the scene file, near the top, you're going to see I have this complete building on the front and on the side, and directly down below, I have the individual modular pieces that actually assemble this entire building. Let's go ahead and first focus on these individual modular assets. I'm going to switch to the front camera. In this scene file, I do have everything set to eat. And if you take a look at the grid lines, you're going to notice that all the geometry lines up perfectly flat with the grid. Now, there are a few exceptions to this based on what sort of overlap that I wanted. This is tip number one, work with easy numbers. If I go ahead and grab any one of these individual assets and decide to duplicate, you'll notice all these numbers maintain complete whole numbers. Uh, this allowed me to make sure that everything could perfectly line up. If I take a look at this pillar, this pillar right here is 10 feet tall by 3 feet wide. I could actually combine this with this windows over here, at which case I make a 10 foot by 10 foot uh, section. If I go ahead and zoom out and look at some of these other pieces, I do have a handful of things that don't line up perfectly to whole numbers. But for instance, this window, if I take this piece right here and snap it to the window uh, right here, you'll actually notice this then becomes a 10 foot section. This is what helped me make sure that stuff like this could always line up perfectly with stuff like this right here. So notice everything stays perfectly flat. And with these whole numbers, it's just a lot easier to manage. Tip number two, maintain proper pivots. I'm going to go ahead and expand this group just so I can show all of my individual assets. And I'm going to hit D on the keyboard. Hitting D allows me to show off the pivots. And what you're going to notice is I actually have these pivots in the bottom left corner of everything. This is what helped me make sure that I could actually snap things with what I want to. If I go ahead and grab this pillar right here, notice how the pivot is down in this corner. I can just snap it along this side and it's going to connect, or I can snap it back here. And it's always snapping in a point where I want these to be. There are certain things, for instance, this wall right here. Notice how I have this pivot kind of floating down near the bottom. Uh, this was done with intent because if I go ahead and snap this over here on this pillar, Notice how these two pieces line up perfectly straight the way I want them to be. Some of these other pieces like so, uh, this is some detail or decoration to go on these pillars and same exact idea. I end up snapping it at the same point and this way I can decorate and position stuff exactly how I need them to be and everything's always going to line up exactly right. Tip number three, name all your assets. If you look over in the outliner, you're going to notice I have all of these assets named in a way to better help me figure out what is what. I can go ahead and grab this pillar. Notice how it's called pillar underscore geo. I have a pillar corner. I have a pillar base. I have a pillar base corner. If I come down here to the cornice, I have cornice 01, cornice 01 short because this one actually lines up perfectly with the regular version. I have this cornice 01 corner because again, I needed pieces that could actually line up based on if it was the front or the corner. And I worked to always maintain this sort of naming convention. Tip number three, do not overcomplicate your kit. Uh, if we look at what I have, I do have 25 different assets, uh, which did get a little complicated, but at the same time, this could have got way worse. As shown just a moment ago, I did have to create a regular version, a short version, a corner version for a handful of these things. But notice nothing here is all that complicated. For the most part, I have a regular version and a short version and a corner for most of these assets. Uh, this just allowed me to create more variation and quickly be able to combine things as I saw fit. Now that you have a base understanding of how I went about creating these pieces, let's go ahead and make a building. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this group of modular assets and I'll go ahead and hide these two. Now you may have noticed all these pieces are actually below the ground, which may seem kind of odd. If I go ahead and select all of this geometry right here and zero out the transforms, you're going to notice everything snaps to origin. And this goes back to that idea of the pivots. Notice how the pivot is actually the one that is at the origin. All right. So from here, I'm just going to move all 
all this stuff back down just so I can see what I'm doing. Go ahead and hit minus 20. And I think I'm going to go ahead and start off with pillars. I'm going to go ahead and grab my pillar and my base and zero this out. And I'm just going to start right there. Now I am looking at a reference image to the side of my monitor and I'm just going to work to start matching some of that. So I'm just constantly duplicating these. Uh, these I know I need a spacing of 10 and I'm going to duplicate it two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Go ahead and grab my windows, which I know is this one right here. Since I have these as really good whole numbers, uh, notice how I can just kind of snap right here. So this is a translate of 13 and everything else is zeroed out. Now I'm just going to go ahead and snap this along a few more times. Grab my main door. Let me go ahead and zero this back out and snap it right like so. So now I already have the entire bottom side of this build. Go ahead and grab this next piece, which is this divider. Now you may notice these windows are shorter than this piece right here. Uh, this was because I actually built this divider kind of like so. And now notice how this divider lines up perfectly with this right here. So there was a considerable amount of thought that went into making sure all this stuff could line up. Go ahead and grab this window. And I'm continuing to just keep snapping these things and duplicate this, just duplicate it to fill in all of those gaps. Go ahead and grab this trim piece and I'll just snap it like so. Now I did actually make sure all of these pieces, uh, the translate Z, everything on translate Z should be set to zero. And I'll just snap that all the way across. Next up is the cornice. So I'll grab these two pieces right like so. I'll just drag these up here for a moment. Now, the reason why I have a short version and a long version is to match whether or not the cornice was above a window or above a pillar. And notice when it snaps up here, I have this as a translate 20. And since this is a three foot wide pillar, this should actually be set to three. Go ahead and snap this down. Notice how this is also set to 20. And I'll go ahead and just duplicate the short piece first, kind of like so. I'm just hitting Shift D to duplicate it all the way across. And I'll grab the wide version, duplicate that all across. And now notice I now have two levels to this building. And now I'm just going to quickly speed through the rest of this. And just like that, I now have a complete building facade. 